live on Discovery Plus. There are four tables being used this evening, and you can watch every on Discovery Plus. For us, it's Luca Brussel against this young man, Stan Moody. He just turned 17 last month. He was actually on the TV table at the British Open last week. He lost 4-0 to Barry Hawkins, who played superbly, it's got to be said, against him. Luca Brussel here lost 4-3 in the first round to Ding Jun Wee. Stan Moody's first season, all very exciting for him, and he's up against the world champion, Luca Brussel. Of course, he played at the Crucible when he was 17, the youngest person to play there, so he knows what it'll be like for Stan Moody to walk out in front of a big crowd. Hasn't won a match yet this season. Let's see if things change. If he were to win, obviously, it would be a pretty sensational result. But he, at the moment, Neil, he's just trying to gain experience in this environment, isn't he? He is, and he's a really good prospect, very good player. But, of course, like you say, he hasn't won a match. That is a fact. And uh, maybe it's a different kind of pressure playing the world champion. He's capable of winning matches like this, I think. But in his first season as a professional, it's either going to go one of two ways. A number of defeats is either going to make him a better player or can take his uh, confidence away from him. So we'll just have to monitor his progress. Many a player with a big future, and there's no doubt he's got one have dropped off the tour after a couple of years and come back a better prospect. Anyway, Luca is centre stage, as he should be. He always say he can learn more, you know, in defeats. And he's had a few, the match with Tom Ford. He, he could have won in the qualifiers for the International Open, but he didn't. But if you lose a lot of them, it just can go the other way a little bit. So we'll just enjoy the match. There's no pressure on him as such. But the win is what he really needs under his belt. Yeah, it's got to be said against Hawkins, he didn't really get that many chances. Barry was very, very solid last week in Cheltenham. Well, before his next match, Barry Hawkins actually made a point of saying that, says the young lad, Stan Moody, who I beat in the previous round, I didn't really give him anything, and that's exactly it. He, he just didn't. It's like sport is uh, stepping up in grade. It can be tough. Anyway, there's a handy one. Every little helps in this sport. Yeah, he's a former English under-18 champion. He won the World Snooker Federation Junior World Open. And that got him on the tour, and then a week later he was runner-up in the sort of senior event, the, the World Amateur Championship as such. I'm ready. Well. Brussel, we saw at the European Masters, he wasn't using the, the cue that he'd won the World Championship with, it had gone missing. He lost to Barry Hawkins in the last 16, of course he went on to win the tournament. Got the cue back, time for Shanghai, got to the final, and only just lost out 11-9 to Ronnie O'Sullivan. With the, the green and brown a little closer together, it's a good target to get in behind as Luca managed to locate there, and he's, he's made things difficult for Moody.
Yes, he thought it was worth the risk. It wasn't the most natural shot, but Kubel has found a lovely path back into vault. That's uh, caused trouble. He didn't play it. He, I think I wouldn't. I've been keeping my hand down for that one. I've been happy to let my opponent think that I did play behind the yellow, even if I didn't. Oh, goodness me. Goodness me. <laughs> he got closer to it the second time. He, I know what he tried. He tried to screw it onto the cushion and hit the top side of the red and push it down. Nico De Vos is refereeing this game. And he's got to replace the yellow as well. first time around. Of course, uh, Brussel last year in the English Open was runner-up to Mark Selby. It was played just before Christmas, a little later in the calendar, but he had a good week here, some good memories. Meanwhile, that's a good pop from Stan Moody. Oh, hang on, where's the white? Yeah, he just flicked off a red. That's unlucky. And worse still, of course, he left a long red for Brussel. It's a good pot, this. Just flicked off that red. Stan Moody is uh, perhaps about to be reminded of uh, what he's seen a bit this season, the cruelty of the game, because he played a nice shot, but went in off. Brussel looking to really rub it in here, establish himself early in this match. I think he's played OK, hasn't he? He didn't play particularly well against Ding Xiongui last week. He was 3-0 down, struggling. And then he sprung into life to get to 3-0, and then, of course, you think, well, he's got everything, all the momentum... All and the force was with him, but he, he ended up losing, as so many do when they claw back to a decider. Somehow it seems to just change a little bit back towards the player. But I think in general his form is OK. And he wasn't a million miles away from being Shanghai Masters champion. So he's made a fair enough start to his campaign as well, champ. Yeah, and just going back to last year, players he beat, in the last couple of rounds, Judd Trump and Mark Allen before losing to Selby. Obviously, he's challenging for number one in the world and the World Championship points are massive in that, but it's not the only reason he's there. He was on that two-year cycle. He'd been in five ranking finals and he'd won three of them, so he had points from other tournaments as well. He's going to be world number one, Dave. It might have to be before the UK Championship, mightn't it? Because, of course, he reached the final of that a couple of seasons back. So those points will be taken off. Yeah, it, it, it's you're right. It's the sort of constantly shifting sands. I mean, O'Sullivan actually, the World Grand Prix at the end of the year, those points have come off. So it's not just sort of um, what you're doing in tournaments now. It's what you did in tournaments then. Anyway, if you're winning matches, it sort of sorts itself out as that blue stays out. And we've seen already, again, these pockets not necessarily that forgiving as they shouldn't be.
It's a question of what pots to the right corner because it's easy to pot the black, or easier to pot the black. And not have to do a lot with the cue ball, playing just out to the middle of the table. But he's not going to beat uh, Luca Brussel missing those. When you see it from this view, the black was far enough away from the cushion for it not to be a particularly difficult shot. Yeah, four tables being used here, although actually only three in this session. For some reason that I can't fathom, the, <laughs> there's going to be four later on. Why don't they just start that match now? On table three, Barry Hawkins and Anthony Hamilton. I suspect they'd rather just start now, wouldn't they? Well, I'm guessing they must come on at eight o'clock, which is, of course, the cut-off point for the second match, where you can't start before eight. But they, I can't think they ever would start within an hour of the first match on the tables, but that's the earliest they can start. Yeah, I don't know, but it makes sense what you're saying. So this is tricky. Black to the middle. He's queued, the two reds he's queuing over the top of with his bridge hand, I think, make it the problem here. He's got to watch. He doesn't uh, touch those with his shirt sleeve or anything. Well done. Well done. I think if he could just get a frame early in this match, he's on the back of a 4-0. Pretty much a drubbing against <coughs> very informed Barry Hawkins last week. Let's get a frame on the board early. Might help him no end, he's a good player. Yeah, a couple of the matches he's lost, he's run established players close. He lost a decider to Elliot Slesser, European Masters, and 6-4 uh, to Tom Ford, International Championship. So he got close, but it's about getting over the line, obviously. Struck that really well, perfectly now behind the red. Things at this stage will start to get more difficult, the two reds below the black. Certainly the top one is likely to be his next one that he plays on. Five. But to win the frame here, he's going to take some doing. Possibly an angle low on the black to nudge the red directly below the pink into play. His next couple of shots, that's the thought process. Well, he doesn't have the angle now. So he looks as if he might have to just run through on the bottom red. He can win the frame without the use of the right-hand red. That is the one good thing for him. But this red is going to be taken with the utmost care. Unlucky. Just flicked the near jaw. Uh, that was a shame. That was a showing promise there, that opportunity. There might have been occasions where that would have gone in. I don't think it necessarily should have done, but I have seen those drop. 
these tables on occasions. Likelihood of an angle on the green is what he wants. Has he got a wide enough angle to bring the red into play? Or, failing that, maybe leaving a double on the red into the left middle. He's played the cannon. Just nudged it. Not enough. It wasn't a natural. More of a, a, certainly a wider angle would have made that cannon more likely to work out. So, Moody 10 in front on the last red. The danger is if Brussel does come and win this frame now, you know, with the way he plays, he could just run away with this match. We've seen that happen before. We saw it this afternoon, actually. Andrew Padgett had a bucket load of chances to win the opener against Ronnie O'Sullivan, and he, he didn't, and he lost 4-0. Strange old shot. He played the double kiss because he didn't want to move the, the yellow out, but he moved it out anyway. An odd one, that. He has managed to separate the balls anyway. Big distance between cue ball and red. <laughs> it's not going to be a frame winner. I think if I were Luca here, well, I think I'd be inclined to to get that blue into play in some form. I think that would be my choice of shot. Try and bring the blue into the game and potentially get a snooker behind the green and brown. He doesn't want to leave the blue there. That's not helping him. I think that's the kind of shot I would have been looking at. I'm not saying I'd have played it as well as he did because he's got that snooker and now the frame is all about who pots the yellow. feeling that the advantage of nine points that Stan Moody has is one thing, but the positioning of the ball suggests that Luke is a small favourite in the frame. Only a small favourite. Wow. That'll go back, I should think.
kind of dangerous shot, wasn't it? I guess a smattering of applause. I'm not sure that's worked out exactly as Luca Brussel wanted it to because I believe that Stan Moody was meant to be snookered. He's actually got a pot available here. Not an easy one, but it's a chance. I mean, it would have been on anyway, but obviously it's far easier now with the cue ball in the D. It is just a question of whether the brown has covered the green's natural pocket top right. If so, it's a slightly more difficult way of getting from yellow to green. This one shot will be a frame winner here if he gets this next one right. Don't think the green will pass the brown. Shot, but that is as good a position shot as you'll see. And it's one of those shots, it may have looked nothing, but trust me, that was precision from yellow to green. Nine. So the blue would mean that Stan Moody could tie, but. Whether he gets the chance is another thing. 14. It's like the one that got away for Stan Moody. He was in a good position at one point. Yeah, he had plenty of table time, didn't he, in the first frame. Not like the Hawkins match, really, where he was frozen out early on. That uh, lattering off led to this visit from Seven. Luca Purcell. So the world champion on the scoreboard here in Brentwood this evening. Remember, it's best of seven for place in round two of the English Open. Brussel leads Moody 1-0. Evening session underway here at the Brentwood Centre, day one of Snooker's English Open. This is launching the eighth year of the Home Nation series. Luca Brussel, runner-up last year here to Mark Selby, and of course runner, uh, it beat Mark Selby in the final of the World Championship. He leads 1-0. Selby was due to play today, but because he was in the British Open final yesterday, his match and Mark Williams' match has been moved to tomorrow. In fact, it looks like they've got to play twice tomorrow if they're successful in their first matches, just to catch up. I think one thing we are going to see with Luca Purcell all, all season, uh, first of all, we're going to watch a lot of his matches on the main table because he's the champion of the world. I don't think he's ever going to change his style. He's a pretty attacking player. Even the speed in which he played shots in that last frame, he's on the attack for the most part. Great shot. <laughs> Lovely pop from Stan Moody. We saw him about 18 months ago now at the shootout. He won a match there. And OK, it's only 10 minutes, but he really got involved with the, the occasion. It clearly meant a lot to him and with more motivation to keep working hard to actually get on the tour, which he's now done. Remember, it's a two-year card, so this is his first year. Fine. But it's a bit like learning to swim by being thrown in, in the deep end, isn't it? You know, he's up against the, the world champion. It's an opportunity, though. That's how, what he's got to look at it as, an opportunity. That wasn't one of his best. Yeah, he's playing quickly tonight, Stan. I, I've seen him take a little bit more time. The balance is hard to get because I've seen him also look at shots for a little bit too long without making decisions. But anyway, he's in with a chance straight away.
Uh, that was a big opportunity, having broken down initially, immediately got another chance and didn't take it. Yeah, sea of faces watching them. I guess the good news so far for Moody, OK, he's 1-0 down, but Brassell hasn't exactly hit the heights himself yet. He's had chances that he hasn't taken as he attempts to just cut this one in, which he's done. And yeah, that was a pretty handy flick this time. The man on uh, table two, Sean Murphy, has become a bit of a mentor figure. He will have passed on, obviously, a lot of advice. He turned that pro, actually, Sean, when he was 15, initially. But, of course, when you're out there, you're on your own. Yeah, well, of course, Murphy went off tour. Uh, that's the point I was making earlier. And it happened to Neil Robertson and you know, Ryan Day, who are been leading players over these others of course and only named a few but that first incarnation of you know, just playing and being involved it doesn't always end well for players especially in the cutthroat nature of qualifiers and uh, the difficulty I mean you think about Judd Trump what a player he is he turned professional everyone thought he was going to immediately be world champion there's Murphy who say went off the tour playing tonight on the other table Looks like he's 2 nil up, just about to go. But what I was going to make about Judd Trump, I mean, he looked like he was the best junior player. He was already winning events against seniors before he was able to turn pro at 16. He almost had to wait two years. He was good enough at 14. But it took him an age to end up coming through that and getting himself known. He's, he's tough in those qualifiers. Some really good players in there. Yeah, Trump, in especially, was sort of introduced to the bulk cushion quite a bit by some of the old sweats who have uh, been on the tour a long time. 13. I think Stan Moody is a really good player. He may have a few reversals in his first couple of seasons, but ultimately, if he keeps doing what he does and lives the right lifestyle, then I'm sure he'll go to the top because he's got something about him. He's good. But that is not in itself enough. See how he fares tonight. Just making a few errors. That was another one. Hitting the brown ball. And he's lost the cue ball completely. So it's not going great at the moment. Chances are coming. And it is a tough school, as we know. Yeah, that's disappointing, all those reds in various possible positions and he's not landed on one. Oh, Modi, 18. Still, though, a little loose so far. <coughs> he spoke in the interview with Alan about the, the increased demands on his time, which have been considerable, of course, since becoming world champion. Everyone wants to speak to him and 
film with him, interview him, all the rest of it, personal appearances, and it's about trying to manage that and also concentrate on the business on the table. Yeah, it's a good pot. So another chance. Yes, it is a good chance, this one, and uh, they're not going to keep coming, so this might be the time to put this frame away, I think. Thanks. I like his cue action a lot. Uh, ever since I first saw him playing in the shootout a couple of seasons back, you could see that his cue action is really nice, the way he hits the ball. Confident and uh, rhythmical cue action. Cue comes back really well, and uh, I've only got to look at him to see that he's a decent prospect. Seventeen. Certainly, a couple of reds in the middle of the table. He should be looking to. Get out of the way. The red by the pink spot, I think. That would open up something else. Playing behind that one. And then he'll be close to getting this frame one. Promise shown, but not able to put this frame to bed. No, and this is a good chance, isn't it, for Brussels? There's nothing safe, actually. As I say, he will be aware of what mood he's feeling. He was a bit of a protege himself, played at the Crucible at 17 for the first time. Well, it's opened everything up, Dave, is not it? All of a sudden, uh, Stan Moody will be even more regretful about not taking that last chance. Now the two Reds have been pushed into play. Yeah, and this is very different to that Hawkins match that we talked about. Oh, yeah. Barry was watertight that night. Safety was excellent, and he scored. brussel has been loose, but the fact is he's got the chance for 2-0. By the way, the winner of this match plays uh, the veteran Andy Hicks from Devon. He came through qualifying. There was a, a pre-qualifying round in Leicester. This is that round, but obviously the top 16 held over. Feel that if he can get onto the what will be the the last red place where it is, not awkwardly but not not simple to get on. Thirty-one. The next shot to land in behind it would be a frame winner, because after that there's not much that uh, would stop him. Ah, oh, that's a well played shot. 
he's gone just a fraction too far, but it's still, he'd be more than happy to have finished there prior to the previous shot, I think. Thirty-five. Right. This frame goes the way we think it might. It's a question of Stan Moody making a lot of the running, making mistakes in both, and then Luca Brussel picking up the pieces and just snatching them both. He hasn't done it yet, but you feel that he probably will from here. What did you? Yeah, two very similar frames. He won the first on the pink. And needs down to the pink here. Moody's been competitive, yes, but just one error too many. It seems in this frame, it's up to Purcell to take it out. So the pink for 2 0. Yeah, Moody's last mistake was thoroughly punished. Clearance of 67 from Luca Brussel, the world champion, halfway towards a place in the second round of the English Open. And the teenager with a little bit to think about here. Nil to Luca Brussel. Stan Moody's had chances, but two pink ball wins for the Belgian. Just to say on table four, Matt Sell won the first frame against Michael White with a 1-3-5, and then he won a black ball frame for 2 nil. So two very different frames, both gone to an Essex man, of course. Matt Sell, a Romford man. So very much on home soil here. I'm sure he's got plenty of supporters in. And 2 nil to Sean Murphy on table two against Lu Hongyu. They've set the table up on table three, so that suggests that Barry Hawkins and Anthony Hamilton match will start soon. Well, he's in again, and he's had no problem actually getting in. It's keeping a bit of control once he is in, isn't it? And I guess for him as well, and it's absolutely natural, he's only 17. He's just keeping the excitement at bay at what he's doing here, what he's involved in. If you can just try and calm it a bit, it's another chance. wasn't easy. I thought the positional shot was not so good to be on the red like that, but the chances are raining in for Luca Brussel. They're coming all the time. And if something changes, you get the feeling that he's going to win this match because you can't give a world champion the amount of chances that are coming his way without eventually coming unstuck. In. Well, that'll be a, more than an annoyance. He played on the bottom red. The interesting thing is, now that he's not quite on it, will Stan Moody be tempted to try and cut the thin red in? No, he decides against it, probably wisely.
Foul. Oh, goodness, I hope the balls aren't replaced here because that is going to be a, a night there for Nico DeVos. That is going to be an all-time nightmare. I mean, he's moved the pink and then a series of reds. I guess the thinking is, and he's put him in from here, awkward from the jaws. Well, everyone's happy with that, I think. Probably handy for Luca that the uh, pink will go up onto the blue spot. Eight. And with the green away from his own spot, the up and down the table pink to the reds through bulk is not that difficult. Quite a good chance this. I know the pink spot. It's going to be opened up now, and I don't know what he'll be getting on very easily from his next red. But the balls are in good positions. Well, there's your answer. 15. That's a very fine shot. Nice little nudge on the, the other red, and now he could be in business. Yeah, this was the danger for Moody that Brussel would start to find his game tonight. He did struggle first two frames, but he won them. And now he could well dominate for the rest of the evening. 23. fluent, isn't he, Luca, when he's in? He took a little bit of a risk there. Playing the cannon, which probably didn't need to be played. He was only trying to, I think, play the cannon to just hold for the red rather than develop anything, because they're all on in, in the first place. So which one now? The choice of reds, all of which are with awkward queuing. Should have done better there. I think you'll know that. I think the cannon was, it was unnecessary that he played. Could have easily played on a red or two, which 
Didn't require getting a cannon. Things can go wrong when you play shots like the one he did. straightforward plug you'll ever see that one with the red that he was knocking in not hanging over the pocket very nice well it's an unexpected chance isn't it it looked certain to be Brussels frame it should have been really and then 3 nil. you think there's no way back but if he could fight back and steal this one then it really is game on and what an injection of confidence it would be he's in his hands yeah it's just where he left himself here should have had an easier one than that yeah well, we've been saying it or certainly I have for a while now, but these chances are going to have to be punished. Keep that man in sitting in his chair. to say I did notice someone moving turning around Body. Eight. on his eye line and then we can uh, get a chance to see camera. that shot again from the angle that we originally had on the yellow and I saw some movement behind the shot which would have caught his eye well the referee actually said make sure you don't use a flash camera so if, if it was that then that is going to be clearly off putting yeah but that chap there I thought he, he was what? supposed to keep still and he was looking all around but uh, anyway, whatever it was, it's an unfortunate. I, I think he was distracted there. Oh, a miscue. Wow, well, it's all happening. That was horrible, wasn't it? The noise it made. No, it sounded like a branch snapping on a tree or something. So look, this is another chance here. She's getting to the point where must have no return if this doesn't get taken. Yes, it feels that way, doesn't it? He's 30 behind. But back at the table. But if it goes 3-0, then it seems very unlikely he's going to turn it round. off earlier he's uh, thankfully back at the table very quickly anyway we move on and this chance is still a good one yeah there was a player last week who wasn't too happy with someone in the crowd and was a little less polite about it the way he went about it but uh, young Stan just had a word with the referee there
both. Well, he wonders whether he's got enough of the pink available without the red getting involved, because it would be a foul if so. Yeah. Slightly compromised position there in uh, being concerned about whether he was on the pink. The lead is diminishing, only 11 Thank points you. now. That uh, he trails. This, you think, would be the biggest shot of the frame if he could get from his colour, I think the, the pink, and get perfectly in behind the yellow, then the frame is at his mercy. Mm, that's good, but... And this is not uh, a certainty by any means. Not quite behind the yellow as he would like. The truth is, he could have been 2 0 up. He had enough chances, but this now is the opportunity to win his first frame after the unexpected Brussels miscue. And snooker audiences love newcomers, and I'm sure if he wins the frame, they'll let him know their appreciation. This has been a very good break. Much more like it. Uh, beautiful shot on the brown, wasn't it? Perfect on the blue. Needs the pink as well for 2-1. Just checking the scores. That's the maths. Williams did exactly this last night when needing the pink, finishing there, knowing that the black's not the problem. Pink could have been easier, but he's not playing anything but the pot. It's in there. Yeah, pretty good clearance, that. And you can hear the applause that I mentioned from the audience. So we have a match on our hands. Stan Moody this time has taken his chance. Luca Purcell leads 2-1. Now, because... Stan Moody did take his chance that time. We've had, in fact, three pink ball frames, haven't we? 2 1 by Brussel, 1 1 by Moody. So it's been a very tight match. It's 2 1 to Brussel, best of seven for a place in round two of the English Open. Playing this week for the Steve Davis Trophy, named after the king of the 1980s, the six times world champion, and now, of course, a superstar DJ. Yeah, Brentwood is actually the base of Matchroom, which is the, the Empire Barry Hearn built uh, working alongside Steve Davis, of course, in the early 80s. And these days, it's not, not just snooker by any means. Of course, they run the PDC Darts, the Nine Ball Pool Tour, which has really taken off a lot of boxing and various other sports as well they're involved in. Ah, the dreaded double kiss. That miss cue could be a big moment in the last frame because at that point, I mean, he was in earlier anyway in that frame. Should have made it 3-0 earlier. But at that point, he felt there was sort of no way back for Stan Moody, but that unexpected moment changed things.
Hey. <clears throat> Well, that is a terrific shot. That really is. I mean, breaking them up can go wrong. You can miss the, the pot and you can lose position, but both parts of that shot, all boxes were ticked. Well, that was a sort of Luca Brussel type of shot, wasn't it? He's got everything open now. Maybe just winning that frame helped him because he didn't win a frame against Barry Hawkins, Stan Moody. Didn't really look like winning one. He was shut out for the whole of the match the other day in Cheltenham. Now he's picked up a frame. We know he can play. A little bit of confidence from that. Who knows what you can, how far you can take something. Yeah, and also, the, as I say, the, the crowd really got behind him when that pink went in. British audiences love an underdog. Sean Murphy keeping an interesting eye on this. As I say, he's been mentoring Moody. Got his own match to play, by the way, next door. Yeah, I think he's just gone 2-1 over there. Lu Hong Yu has picked up frame three, so Murphy just waiting for the balls to be set up. It's the reason he's got some extra time to watch this. Well, he's done some of the hard work, obviously getting the reds into play, but now it's about just staying focused and trying to keep things simple. This is a serious chance to level up. And these are moments he's been dreaming of as growing up playing snooker. He started at the age of 10. He was actually on holiday with his family and it was raining, so they're indoors and they just found a pool table. He'd shown no interest at all in cue sports to that point. Had a game, enjoyed it, and when they came home, they decided to have a look at snooker. 28. For someone like Stan Moody, who I'm sure is uh, someone that puts in long hours and is improving rapidly. It's a question of putting your practice game out there into the arena. A lot of people in this 36. venue, live TV against the world champion. If you can find your practice game anywhere, right now is where he wants to do it. Absolutely fine. There were plenty of reds that he could choose to land on, and he's got a choice of, I think, at least two. He showed a bit of promise, actually. The World Championship qualifiers last season, he was invited in. He made a century. He got that under his belt already. He was just 16 then. 44. That's another very well played shot. 
really good. 51. He's 17 years of age, 17 last month. Sounds young, of course. We've seen plenty of players, 16, 17, over the years who are real precocious talents. That's not a new thing in snooker. And while he's on the learning curve, improvement can be rapid at this age. Just shows us, doesn't it, what winning a frame can do for you. I mean, he's hit the ball like a dream, actually, in this break. This is the real Stan Moody now. It's clearly very dangerous. She's got to nail this frame now. 60. Black to lead by 67 with 67 on. So one more red, it should be 2-2, two, two, but not just that, it's how he's won the frame that will give Brussel a bit of concern. It's been middle of the pocket stuff, hasn't it, this break? Very impressive. Cube will absolutely bang on as well for the next red. So this is the ball that's going to level up. Well, what a dramatic turnaround because midway through the third frame, Brussel looked a certainty to go 3 0 up. He didn't close it out, and here we are. Not only 2 2, but Moody now looking superb. 73. Yeah, the frame not even into double figures yet. It's just been Sorry, playing four. nine minutes and the frame's long since one. Well, this things, was the miscue, isn't it? Yeah, things changed, Dave, didn't they? Almost from that shot onwards in this match. Yeah, that was in the last frame and it came just after a, a, a moody miss and, you know, the sort of stage was set for Brussel, but that has turned things for sure. Now then, can he go on and make a century? He thought that it was a big cheer when he won his first frame. I'm sure it would be even more rapturous if he can make the ton here. This is wonderful stuff from the 17-year-old. Fair to say, he's now settled Five. into this match. Two balls from the century. Five. And... This match now, very, very interesting. Could there be a big shock on the cards tonight? Yes, if he carries on like this. Wonderful stuff from Stan Moody. There's the applause from this Brentwood crowd who are watching something very special here. Yeah, that was a very appreciative applause and a little bit of cheering, a few whistles to hear that, wasn't it? Great. And... Uh, it's been a, a dazzling break from a, a young talent who is growing in confidence seemingly by the shot. Well, it's obviously his first season. He's not played much snooker, but his highest break on tour, 118, which he can beat here. 110. It's hard to see how anyone could have made this break any better than he has. Once he got the reds open, he's controlled things really well. In. And a sign of great, great potential in this young man. 121. One-handed, is it, Stan? <laughs> His name is Moody, and in that frame he was magnificent. And this match has completely turned. A century from the teenager is 2-2. What a fascinating match this is. A break of the highest quality there, 121. Stan Moody. What a thriller. And this is the thing with snooker, you know, I mean, we had a, a big week last week, big night last night, but that's all gone now. It's another week, another tournament, another 
entertaining contest here. Remember, after this match, it'll be Judd Trump against Sean O'Sullivan. But all eyes now on these two. Moody, though, he has to stay calm. You know, that was a very exciting 10 minutes or so, but got to focus now on this next frame. Good grief. <laughs> what a shot. He's dug out a plan. Stay calm. He's having the time of his life. A lot of balls moved around there. I mean, the plant was on, but he is, I mean, I think two reds went in. Every time you see that shot, I reckon you'd see something different which happened on it. What he is unlucky is that the red has gone in front of the blue. The question is, is he going to convert this form onto winning the match? That's the next thing. He's got himself into it now. He's started to play better. Now there's a match to be won. That's where he'll move things onto the next level. Playing the world champion, playing well. Got to get the right balance. At the moment, he's doing the right thing. He's taking his time to find the, um, the safety shot, which he needs to keep the break, or to keep the uh, momentum going, I think. And Moody. Well, I think it's encouraging for his supporters here. He didn't try and keep the break going with sort of a wild attempt at a colour. He's been sensible. What must Luca Brassell think? I mean, we know how he plays. <laughs> the form that he showed at the Crucible, the, the attacking game, but it's been done to him now. Yeah, the family obviously got the best seat in the house. Great excitement brewing for them. Very good, once again, very good. Look, a little bit un uneasy in his chair all of a sudden, isn't he? There is uh, his father up there, Mark, uh, in the uh, far right. Father Carlo. Just in behind that uh, few people. First one he's missed for a while, that. Well. So what's Luca Brussel going to come back with? I suspect he's, you know, he's done enough the last couple of years to tell us that he'll have an answer if the chances are there. Whatever happens, it's a very interesting match we're watching. It just feels like right. brussel has got to be the sort of wise, sober one here. He's got to be the one in control of himself, use his experience. Yeah, I think that's OK. Uh, playing on the yellow, which getting the yellow away from there up the table is clearing the decks to keep the brakes going. Yeah, his <laughs> family's in the audience, both families. So maybe adding a bit of pressure, but also motivation. 
with the players. Of course, we saw Carlo after the world final. Very emotional, understandably. Right. And what his boy had achieved. Yeah, he's uh, decided to sit a bit further back <laughs> than the Moody family. Just try and keep out the way. Hit the jaw of the middle pocket there, which uh, is the reason the cue ball never came out onto a red nicely. Extraordinary. I don't think he ever thought that was going to go in. Potted it, and he didn't seem that uh, it entered his head that the cube was going to end up in the same pocket. Just walking around the player's next shot, and the cube ball disappeared. And the angle on the three reds from the black is to get them open into it. We'll put them all into play. One shot here is crucial. Getting this right, the pot and the position. Disturbing the reds could put him in front. Big shot. Could hardly have played it better. If he just keeps his little bubble of concentration going here, he's got a really good chance. Nice ball striker. I like the way he hits the ball, but he'd be furious to have end up there. He could have finished on the left side of the two reds. Can't think how it could have gone wrong. Is he on one? I'm not sure quite how he meant it to go, but... I'm not sure Luca will be overjoyed to see that because he gave it every indication that he's not on one and then he proceeds to knock it in. So uh, that'll uh, be uh, something of a frustration for the world champion. Thought he was back in the frame. Pot success, 58 out of 67, but... A lot of those nine that were missed were earlier in the match than we're seeing now. Most of them are going in without wishing to put the jinx on things. Twenty-five. So this will be 15 in front. He'll need all three reds here. Not bad. Look 
Who can only hope that this uh, golden spell from Stan Moody comes to an end soon. Yes, the angle on this is fine. It's just that he's got to hold for the next red up the table. Maybe play on it into the right middle. So let's just drop this in with a bit of drag. Red, black, red. And from 2 0 down, he'll have played really well to go 3 2 up. Beautiful. Now, it's important if he gets on the red that he does not need the colour. So if you can just make sure of the red following this black, everything else is secondary. Biggest shot of the match so far, this one. And as the family look on, one of the biggest shots he's played in his young career. This is effectively to lead the world champion, Luca Purcell, 3-2. Oh, it looks good. Oh, that's delightful. That's beautiful. And the way he's been playing, the confidence in which he seems to have gained. He's not won yet, and that man is not defeated, but the match has been totally turned on its head in the last 30 minutes or so. Yeah, and he's done it playing that entertaining game that we associate, of course, with his opponent. Nothing flashy there either. I think that's good to get the points. Stop Brussel from even con contemplating 36. coming back to the table. Three snookers to tie as it stands. He is going to come back, but a lot to do here. Well, he's left the yellow on, so it's a concession. All was looking good for two and a half frames for Luca Brussel. Stan Moody has taken the game to him, and a big upset is brewing now. The teenager is one away from victory at 3-2. Luca Brussel playing good stuff. Can he close it out, hold himself together if the chance comes? Luca would have been looking to make a quick <coughs> response to all of that. Those three frames that he swept past Luca in a row. But that was not the shot to make it happen. What he didn't want was Stan Moody in first. No, I mean, the, the first chance has come immediately in this frame. It was absolutely dead straight, wasn't it? And I think he saw that he put a bit of, little bit of side on the cue ball. Is why it just went offline. There was no other explanation for missing that one.
Unintentional side, I might add. All the great champions, world champions, all the way down the line. People that have won at the Crucible Six. and all that. They've invariably got another gear they can move up to when they need to. Right now, Luca is at that point where he has to find something extra. Wow, what a shot. I mean, that is what you call hitting the jackpot. Perfectly into that bunch. Twelve. This is as good as it gets, splitting the bunch off the off a bulk colour. What a split. That's a good shot too, goodness, we're seeing a good match here. I thought the afternoon session was okay. We lost Neil Robertson, of course, in the draw, and Roddy O'Sullivan, despite some kind of an injury, was a comfortable winner. But the, uh, the overall standard has been raised in this match. Very entertaining. Yeah, there's been no holding back, has there, and Brussel you know, it could have been over if Moody pots the red with the rest. Who knows what could have happened? This is down to him now to put this frame away, going into a deciding frame finish. Very exciting stuff. No stranger is he to a close match or two. He had plenty on his way to the World Championship. His uh, close supporters been put through it a little bit. He couldn't really get the cue much further. There wasn't much angle on that black. 51. And he forced it, but he's still not perfectly on the red. He wants to play the red to the right middle to land on the blue, but these can be missed. The other red's into a more of an open pocket, I think, the one into the left middle. The door has been opened. Stan Moody needs a frame. Either this one or the next, if there is to be another one. An agonising moment when the match has been taken out of your hands. Focus on what he's doing, try and shut out what it would mean. Not easy, clearly. He's been looking for something this season, not won a match yet. This would be a pretty sensational way to get off the mark, wouldn't it?
We well, didn't try a great deal there, playing on this red. He's missed one with the rest, don't forget. I suppose not dissimilar to this. Six. Into the opposite corner, although the red, the two balls were closer together on the last one. Oh, I did miss that one. Nicely done. Seven. It's going to be forced to play the red in bulk here, but that's okay. Just to run through slightly, I think. Enjoy using the rest because he could have run through and not needed it there. Okay. Does he have reds available into the left corner, or does he have to? Feel that uh, the shot is to go into them from the green. I think he can get on the left hand red from over on the right side. So this next shot again is very important. Good shot. Big moments, these. 16. Yeah, I mean, he was making quite a few errors, wasn't he? First two and a half frames, and Brussel had a golden chance for 3-0, which probably then would have become 4-0, the way things were going. Sean Murphy just had a little peek from his table. 17. Well, he's not got a great angle here. I'm not sure whether he can play on a, something into the right middle or the bottom right pocket of the table, or can he go into them? That's not bad at all. Not bad at all. That it really has opened things up. What a chance he's got now, goodness me. Doesn't really want to play the pink. I think if he could have find an angle on the blue, surely it would have to be the shot. The pink is going to just get stuck in between the three reds when potted. Brussel waits and hopes for another chance here. He was in nicely, missed that red to the middle. Ah, but there's the miss. He wasn't ideal on it. You saw Brussel sort of peeping round. be that uh, Luca Brussel has been given the chance to take this match further at least. If Stan Moody had a, any angle on that blue, he wouldn't have had to play the red at that kind of range. It was a tough one, the red. Nine. The chance has been and gone now, though. Yeah, the black for 3-3. Three, three. What a thriller. What an entertaining match. Brussel knows it could have been over. 
but he lives to fight another day in the decider. 16. Yeah. Yeah, if you think it's hard playing, try watching if you're in the camp of either player. 24. Six. Yeah, I mean, you wouldn't be certain which way this match is going to go now. You feel things might be coming back towards Luca because that chance has gone. Stan Moody looks still very disappointed. And now he's just got to shake it off because another very big frame to come. It's been a... A really entertaining attacking match from the outset. Yeah, we've got one more frame to decide whether the world champion progresses or do we have a big, big story here. Stan Moody has played really well the last few frames but just couldn't quite close it out there. He's going to have to try and do it again if he gets a chance in the decider. Brasello had so many close matches en route to his crucible triumph involved in another one here. And he has extended it to a deciding frame finish. So who's it going to be? Luca Brussel, three. Stan Moody, three. The final frame coming up shortly. Brussel won the sixth frame. Moody did have a chance to get it won. How many more will he get? Brussel is actually the youngest member of the top 16, but in this match he has all the experience. Well, he had to hit that first red a lot thicker to send the cue wider. Just got hold of the cue ball too much there. Played on the blue, I, I suspect. That's what you want in first in a decider. Ball was reasonably placed. I mean, I think if you could get on the red that's by the black spot before he thought about putting the black, that would really help his cause. Stan Moody's father, Nigel, has been sat there all night, obviously biting fingernails. Six. Waiting to see if his boy will get another chance. He had a good one, it has to be said, in the last frame. Just a real burst of form in the middle of this match, which he found. It was terrific to watch. But now we're at the business end, and Luca Purcell, the world champion, is in with this chance. Eleven. Twelve.
And there was the point I was making. Now he's on that red, crucially. 17. So then he'll play the black, and the black will be on his spot, and everything's beginning to unfold here. It's the art of break building. 18. If he pots the black before the red, it gets either put up the table onto a bolt colour or behind its own spot. Oh, not another one. Goodness. It's gone in, which is luck, but uh, it's two miscues. That is not a, something which will inspire any player. It's a legal shot, but it's not a very nice shot to watch. <laughs> now, we should not be playing this from there. It should be easier. Twenty-five. He was going well there, Luca Brassell, but once again the miscue scuppered him. Yeah, completely out of the blue again. I suppose he always will be, but it's made a big difference and left him a more difficult red, which he's missed. The red that he attempted came away from the pocket. see this red that he's closest to as a shot up into the right top pocket without any real risk if he can play it and leave the cue ball to the right of the black if the red doesn't go in which he hopes it does of course it doesn't go in it'll be fairly safe So Stan Moody's in, in the decider. Last night we had victory for one of our great champions, Mark Williams, 48 at the British Open. But of course, sport also needs new blood. And there's a collection of players coming on, and all with potential, all looking to show it. Stan Moody knows this could be a real state if he can get it done tonight. Five. so close to the ball that you're trying to pot next you know it, the position's got to be so precise you've got no margin for error it just slipped past the blue a little bit Positional play from the previous shot was not quite what he's looking for. Just while we see the replay, just to let you know, Matt Selt has beaten Michael White 4 3. It's a high quality match. 3 1 Selt. White fought back with two big breaks. 
and Selt won it with 79. That is very unlucky. That really is. He played this beautifully. Seems that the, uh, the Reds have all got in the way of high value <laughs> colours when they've split. Yeah, I mean, it, it looked over, didn't it, if it got on one there, but it's not been that sort of match. It's not been that straightforward. We got myself. Yeah, but still a little unfortunate not to get on a colour there. 20 points he leads by now then. Stan Moody <coughs> lives to fight another day. Another big shot here. And in it goes. Very nicely played this. He really brought the cue back all the way and played it without any real fear. So now is at the point where a very promising performance can be turned into a win against the world champion. So that is just the next stage of what we're seeing. Can he do it? He's not played a great shot there. He's annoyed that uh, position on his next red is not straightforward. So you feel there's a, quite a lot of snooker necessarily to be played. It's a long way from a formality that will get the match won here. Here we are then, 3-3, three, three, 26 each, on a knife edge, but Moody, the man at the table. I say man, he's <laughs> 17. Just turned, actually, a few weeks ago, 17. What an extraordinary situation to find yourself in with a chance to beat the world champion live on television. So like I say, all three reds now required. It's that left-hand red, which is the problem, which might just keep Luca Marcel's hopes alive. Because otherwise, if you feel that he will take the two in the middle of the table. A 
if he takes low value colors with these reds then he might need a color with the the one near the cushion which would make things a little more difficult but if you're someone like Luca Roselli you're hoping for anything to happen and what has happened is that cue ball has run a little too far there oh wow surely well he's come that break has come to a fairly abrupt end that really has, because at no point did you feel that Purcell was coming back to the table. And I thought he might even take that brown on. It all ended very quickly there, and suddenly... It's only a 15-point lead. That's not going to hurt Purcell that much. I just wonder if uh, Stan Moody could have done a little bit more than just trickle behind the brown, maybe even go for it from where he was. He obviously didn't mean to play there and finish there. He wanted to win the frame at that visit, but he quickly sort of, sort of drew stumps and thought, I'll try and win it at a later visit. He didn't always get a second chance at this level. of a shot. Now the red next to the green up there clearly is not going to be easy to get on. So we'd have to get on it in a, a way to pot it along the cushion into the top right or maybe Cannon might consider the snooker here. But from the pink you're coming up towards the red it might be worth taking a hit he could somehow get him into play, get behind it perhaps. Somebody. Well. Well, the bad news is he got quite close to it and uh, he's getting very edgy this match. It's been very good, but now the nerves set in. Very much so. He's focusing clearly on where he wants the cue ball. Hasn't potted the pink. 16 in it on the last red. Of course, Purcell lost a decider last week to Ding at the British Open. He also lost one to Barry Hawkins in Germany and, of course, 11-9 to Ronnie O'Sullivan in the Shanghai final.
Well, he hasn't got the snooker, so uh, you know, all the gasps. I mean, Stan Moody could, could potentially get one back here. Could try and pop the red up into the top right. If he gets close to the red, it'll stay up that end. Signing against it. Not a bad shot by any means. frame this you feel that there could be a few more twists I think Luke has got the cover it's almost to the side of the black which is covering yeah he's got there somehow his next shot might be much fun but it was well played well escaped Yes, and he's naturally getting a lot of support here from this Brentwood crowd who recognise a, a young talent, a new face. I mean, they like watching Brussel as well. It's been a very entertaining contest. And it's anyone's, isn't it? It's been a sellout all day. It's been packed all day here. And been building up to this session of course we've still got Judd Trump to come against uh, Sean O'Sullivan on this table <coughs> well you can think of someone like a Mark Selby playing here also saw him in action last night in the British open final but from this situation every chance he'd get a snooker with his ability at this kind of state of a frame and the world champion has done exactly the same thing he was going to be behind the green there this is a quintessential decider anyone's right now It was tough. And he got the feeling from his expression, didn't like the shot, but he's been knocking the shots like that in. Very cool safety from Brussel. play for Brussel, not at the moment for Moody, it's in his favour where it is. Well, 
Well, he hit that a little harder than he, he needed to and didn't have control. Now, I'm sure he must have the cover. Can't believe that the red goes past the green, can it? Luca was having a very... Well, a slightly worried look, I thought, to see what kind of message Stan Media was giving. Can he pot it? Green's, if not completely in the way, it's partly in the way of the pocket. Mm, it might just creep in off the jaw, but it's anything but easy. So, Priscell has potted the last red, but there's work to do yet. Well, he's already lost his way a little here. Yeah, I mean, it's been a very nervy decider. It's, what, 27 minutes Thanks. longest frame of the match, quite comfortably. Down to the colours, 10 points in it. Important lead for Moody where the pink is. Strange shot, really. Didn't do an awful lot there. Not an ambitious safety shot there from Luca. Basically, just putting one ball at one end of the table, the other at the other. So, a chance, but. Yellow to green here for Luca Purcell is not an easy shot. It's no day off, is there, in snooker now? You know, last night was thrilling, that final. The way it finished, and here we are in another venue, another tournament. These players again bring in the drama, the entertainment, the tension. I don't think he went for that, very. Not entirely sure, but I don't think he would have done. I mean, at the moment, he needs yellow, green, and brown to leave Luca Purcell the world champion, requiring a snooker. Because the green won't be easy to pot from his current position. Green, of course, has been pushed even more to that right cushion now, so it's hard to know how this is all going to develop from here. Both players will be very much in need of pulling the green.
could be a factor now that Pink Black, both awkward, that's not in Luca Bussell's favour. He knows it. Yeah, the green could have come out there. It's a real tense standoff here, isn't it, on this yellow? Oh, yellow's in. Yeah, which changes things. It does make uh, a lot more of the next few shots because Stan Moody with a nine-point lead. Green, brown and blue in open play means he's favoured in the frame. Look at Marcel needs an awful lot more than that. Well, he's finished snooking on it. Doesn't want that one back, does he? <laughs> He's got a snooker back. He was, was lucky. He made good contact with the green, but didn't really deserve to, th to get the snooker there. Well, all these little bits of running are massive, aren't they, at this stage, of course. Eight in it, so Moody needs green, brown and blue. You got the snooker. It looks as if the blue must be in the way in some capacity, surely. Yep. Oh, brilliant. See the extreme right of it, but he could pot it. Now that's changed it because if this brown goes in, both players will need some of the more safe shots blue and pink, black awkward as well, of course. Seven. Well, here it is. If this goes in, he's got a double to win the match with the black safe, and all of a sudden we've got a new favourite if it does drop. Is a chance to get the match won. What an extraordinary contest it's been as well. Stan Moody has more than played his part. And he's going to come back to the table. He needs pink and black. Brussel just the pink. What drama on this first night of the English Open. Oh dear. So, just the pink. And the Belgian bullet will have dodged a bullet. In it goes. Not to be for Stan Moody. My word, he entertained us. That 121 in frame four will live long in the memory. He just couldn't quite get the job done. And it is Luca Brussel, to his great relief, who advances to the second round of the English Open. A winner by four frames to three.
Well, extraordinary drama here. And Luca Brussel, as you can see the relief on his face. And I can tell you, Sean Murphy has been knocked out as well by Lu Hong Yu on table two. So one seed out, another one, Luca Brussel.